Okay, today we're learning 2-1, um, solving linear equations and inequalities. We're actually cutting this one off with linear equations, and we're going to do inequalities later. But I need to talk to you all about taking notes. Um, there's been confusion. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. What I expect when I grade your notes is definitions, charts, and the practice problems, especially the you try its some people have said they start watching the video, they already get it, they don't want to take notes. That's fine. Um, you just won't get as much credit. I need to see the you try it. That at least shows me that you're taking notes and you're practicing the problems. So, on to this lesson. Um, an equation. It's a mathematical statement that two expressions are equal. That means we have something with an equal sign and something. A solution, the values or value of the variable that make the equation true. We always get down to something that would say like x equals 2. That is a solution. We're also doing inequality, so that mean, means we might get a statement like x is greater than 2. Okay, those are your solutions. A linear equation. Anything that has a variable and it's raised to the first power. This is a linear equation. This is not a linear equation. This is not a linear equation. I can go on. We learned about parent functions last section, so you guys should remember what linear is. I have a variable raised to the first power. First example, of course we start right into word problems. To read this, a local phone company charges $12.95 a month for the first 200 of airtime, plus seven cents for each additional minute. If Nina's bill for the month was $14.56, how many additional minutes did she use? Now we need to break this up. For me, I'm gonna write what it equals Hold on. It won't let me go back. There we go. I'm going to write what it equals at the end because I know this whole mess of information equals, goodness, $14.56. Okay? Now, they charge a monthly charge. For the first 200 plus additional minute use additional minute charge times number of additional minutes equals your total. So the monthly charge is $12.95. And then we add 7 cents per minute, and that equals $14.56. So I have $12.95 plus M equals $14.56. Okay, we have an equation. That's the hardest part about these word problems. Now we just need to solve for it. We're trying to isolate the variable. So we're going to do opposite of what we see here. This is plus 12.95, so we need to do the opposite. And what we do to one side of the equal sign, we're also going to do to the other. Okay, 14.56 minus 12.95 is 161, and that equals what's left over over here. Now I have 0.07m equals 1.61. I need to do the opposite of times right here. The opposite of multiply or times is divide. Those cancel out. I'm left with minutes equals... 23. So Nina 
used an additional 23 minutes. So what we did, we tried to figure out how to write our equation, and then we solved our equation for our variable. Okay, you try this one. Stacked cups are to be placed in a pantry. One cup is 3.25 inches high, and each additional cup raises the stack 0.25 inches. How many cups fit between two shelves 14 inches apart? Okay, push pause and try to figure it out. Um, I always start with a picture. You can actually start with that. Here I have two shelves, and they are 14 inches apart. If I put one cup in here, that's 3.25 inches tall. If I stack another cup inside of it, I raise it 0.25 inches. How many cups can I put in here? So there's our answer. One cup, one cup plus additional cup height times number of additional cups equals total height. 3.25 plus 0.25c equals 14. Solve for C. We first subtract from both sides, and then we divide by so both sides, and we're left with an answer. All right. Next set of examples. We are learning just to solve. The title of the section says solving equations with the distributive property. Um, there are two methods to do these problems. I'm going to show you both method with this one equation, and then um, I'm going to do it just one way from now on. So the first way is to see that I'm multiplying 5 by this, um, this quantity, and this is 5 times y minus 7. We know the opposite of multiplication is division, so I'm actually going to divide this whole thing by 5. Okay, always keep in the line where my equal sign is. 5 times the quantity y minus 7 divided by 5, the 5's cancel. And I'm left with y minus 7 equals 25 divided by 5 is 5. Keep solving. y minus 7 to the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. What I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other. I'm left with y equals 12, your answer. Method 2, which means I'm going to distribute first. I get 5y minus 35 equals 25. Okay, I always want to isolate your variable. So I need to get the constants or the numbers on the other side of the equal sign. Five y equals sixty. Divide both sides by five. And I get the exact same answer. So you see there, um, I just solved the same equation two different ways and got the same answer. That's one of the things about math. Um, you can always attack things multiple ways and get the same answer, which can make things either more confusing or easier. I'm always going to use method one. Um, it just seems to make uh, less steps, less mistakes. Okay, you try these two, two equations. Um, you can use either method you like. I'm going to so push pause, solve it, and then let you see the answer. So go ahead and work it. So here you go, I have two answers. Notice the first one. First I divided by three, both sides, the three is canceled. Then I'm still trying to get the, um, sorry, I'm still trying to get the variable by itself, so I do the opposite of add two, I subtract two from both sides. Those cancel. I'm left with negative three p equals 12. To the opposite of, this is three times p, to the opposite of multiply, which is divide. Divide both sides by 3. Those cancel. I'm left with p equals negative 4. Same thing over there. All right. Now we're solving equations with variables on both sides, the third example in the book. There are steps. First, we're going to simplify each side of the, of the equal sign. 
of the equal sign. Next, we're going to move all the variables, or the letters, to one side of the equal sign, and the constants, or the numbers, to the other side of the equal sign. And then um, once we do that, we'll isolate the variable, get the letter by itself. Example, I have an equal sign. First, I want to simplify what's on one side of the equal sign. Um, so do I have any like terms on the left? Looks like I have a 21 and a 7. So I'm going to add those together, and I get 28. And on the right side, I have a 4y and a 5y. I'll add those together and get 9y. Okay, step two, collect the variables on one side and the constants on the other. I'm going to go ahead. I always like to keep my variables positive. You don't have to. So I'm going to move that over there. Subtract 6y from both sides. I'm left with 3y. Okay, now I want to move the constants to the other. Opposite of minus 20 is plus 20. 48 equals 3y. I have constants on one side, the left side, and variables on the right side. I need to get the variable by itself. The opposite of 3 times y is divide. 48 divided by 3, 3 goes into 4 once. 18, I have an answer. Okay, another example. Let's collect our, um, look at the left side of the equal sign. Can I collect any like terms? 3k minus 14k, I get negative 11k plus 25 equals, on the right side, it looks like I have a 2 and a negative 12. That gives me a negative 10 minus 6k. Move the variables to one side, the constants to the other. And add 11k to both sides. Those cancel, and this gives me 5K. Okay, move the constants or the numbers to the other side. A minus 10, the opposite of that is plus 10. 35 equals 5K. 5 times K, the opposite is divide. So k equals 7. You try, okay? You have to distribute first, but you guys know that. So push pause and go ahead and work it out. There's your answer, okay? Go ahead and look through the steps. You can push pause again. You try another one, a little bit easier. Push pause and try it. There you go. You have an answer. That's it. Um, I'm not writing the classwork down because it, sometimes it changes when class starts and I hate for you guys to do more than you need to. So I will see you in the morning.